Hey, Ryan, you just got a package. What are these? Uh, some goodies for my new Tesla. It's got right. some aero caps and uh, a little uh, thing to uh, help Zoe be in the car and not, not damage the seats. Zoe, you hear that? Well, it's been like, I think over a week now since you've got your car, so I'm sure you have some thoughts. Definitely, I'm excited to share them with you. All right, Ryan, your uh, new Model 3 is looking nice and shiny, so what have you done to it? What have you gunned for it so far? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really enjoying it so far. One of the first things that I did was get some floor mats. Surprisingly, it came with no floor mats. Uh, Right now, I have the actual Tesla ones. Uh, they're actually WeatherTech. I'm really happy with them. I first started with some third-party ones. I tried those out, but they ended up making a, a pretty weird echo in the car yeah. uh, just whenever you were talking. So I ended up returning those and just went with these uh, Tesla OEM WeatherTech ones, which I'm really happy with. And all those accessories, you just like order on Tesla's site, right? Yep, straight through the app. It was really easy. Cool. Oh, wow, even through the app. And so they... Good shipping on those. I'm just jealous because my Polestar right now, getting any parts for that. It's always a kind of cross your finger situation. But um, so with this guy, uh, you've got the weather mat sorted out. This is the rear wheel drive LFP spec, right? That's right. Uh, rear wheel drive LFP, uh, blue paint is the only option I have on it. Nice. Uh, I got a few other uh, accessories. I got some uh, caps to replace these uh, aero covers. I don't like how they look. They're, they're efficient, but I'd, I'd rather something uh, look a little bit better better so I'll you be and many those. other model three owners it seems but and I, uh yeah. i also got a new uh uh dog cover for zoe uh this one doesn't fit perfectly but there's one uh from tesla and it also covers the uh the doors as well so she doesn't scratch them nice yeah your nice new seats and you know the black or white seat interior thing with teslas i feel like it's always so controversial clearly you picked a side how do you feel about that so far yeah i'm happy with the the black seats uh, i like how everything looks admittedly it can get pretty hot in the sun but uh, the tesla app is really effective and i can precondition the car so it's much less of an issue than uh than it could be. Yeah, and kind of like my Polestar, you've got the panoramic tinted sunroof thing. How do you find the tint on that uh, panoramic roof? It's good. Uh, I haven't haven't been bothered by the sun yet, uh, so I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't feel like I need a sunshade, so it's good. That's good. Good to hear. Um, battery care, I think, is a big question on people's minds. And obviously, you know, we're not battery chemistry experts, but knowing what we know about LFP, like, what are you, what's your daily routine with this guy? Absolutely. So LFP batteries are a little bit different from a lot of other EV batteries in that they like to be charged all the way up to 100%. So I try to do that pretty frequently. Tesla suggests doing it at least once a week. Um, so I do it at least that much. I also have a level one charger at my house, which is very slow, but it's enough to top it off and keep it at 100%. One thing I have noticed is something called sentry mode, which is basically just dash cams around the car. It keeps track of it when you're away uh, in case everyone, someone bumps into it, scratches it, anything like that. It's a great system. However, it uses a good amount of battery. Uh, 6% or more every day. Uh, so that's that's pretty significant. And so if I, you're level one charging at home, that's a big chunk of your uh, charging gained. Exactly. So it's it's something to keep in mind. So if you're, say, going to the airport, you may, uh, uh, and going on a long trip, you may not want to have sentry mode on because you'll get back and uh, you won't have uh, as much battery as you'd think. Uh, one setting that I did change was I turned sentry mode off at home. So when I'm parked uh, at, at where I live, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with where it is. I'm comfortable with my neighbors. I don't think anything's going to happen. So I'm not recording anything. Uh, and that saves the battery a ton. Gotcha. Sounds good. You're coming from a Bolt, which is a CCS car. So you haven't taken, you know, any epic road trips yet. I know you've been living at home. So experience is largely, I imagine, been similar. But have there been any advantages to NACS, the Tesla connector, the Tesla ecosystem with regards to charging that you've noticed so far? Yeah, uh, it's, it's really easy to charge on the supercharger network, which is nice. I haven't used it a ton yet. Uh, I've also noticed it's a, a good bit more efficient, uh, which is really nice. I love that the GTI just had to really let us know he was tuned. Oh man. Ripping it. He's not in an electric car. He wants us to know it. That's cool. Anyhow, sorry, go on. Uh, so I, I have not used Tesla supercharging a ton yet. Uh, however, something that I have used a lot is the navigation system built into it. Uh, it's a really good system. It's pretty sophisticated. So you put in wherever you want to go and it'll tell you how to get there. And it'll also tell you uh, what state of charge you'll arrive at. So uh, that takes into account uh, 
the route you're taking, so elevation as well as temperature, wind, all that important stuff. And uh, as I've used it more, I've become more and more comfortable with it. It's pretty accurate, mm -hmm. uh, plus minus like 1%, 2%. Uh, yep. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And it makes it a lot more uh, easy and comfortable just to uh, plan everything out. Yeah, a lot of modern electric cars have route guidance built in now with the, you know, predicting your battery percentage when you arrive, but you're finding this system is really quite good to rely on. Yes, I, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it and more confident with it. That's awesome. Well, let's hop in the car, go for a drive, and hear some of those impressions. Absolutely, let's do it. So we're in your Model 3. How do you like this interior and everything overall? So far, I've been pretty pleased with it. I've, I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. I'd love to have a screen right here. It's, it's just... It would be better. Seems like there's a lot of interesting aftermarket accessories. I can't speak the validity of them, but seems like a lot of people have found several hacks to get something there. There are some options, and uh, I'm looking into it. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Yeah. Another thing that uh, I've changed on the car was changing this all to dark mode, which just makes the screen darker, a little bit easier on the eyes, just a preference for me. Nice. Uh, by default, does it like automatically go into this at night, and then it's light and day? Correct. Yeah, that's how, that's how it is. Cool. Very cool though, dark interior, keep it dark in here all the time. I respect it. How are you liking this like software stack overall? The software is very solid. Uh, it's It works well. I'm happy with it. At, at some times I, I do kind of wish I would have uh, Apple CarPlay. CarPlay. Uh, however, I think the software is good enough that I'm okay without it. Are you like an Apple Music or you're a Spotify person? I do Spotify, unfortunately. It has it built in, so that nice. works out for me. Great. And then I guess for phone calls and stuff, you phone over Bluetooth now. That's, that's right. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, it works out well. One thing that uh, I would would like to note is uh, coming from the Bolt, uh, it was really loud, especially on the highway, and I couldn't really talk on the phone when I was on the highway. It was just too loud, too much noise, and mm. the person on the other end couldn't really hear me very well. That's not the case here, which is really nice, uh, which brings me on to just kind of the livability of this car. I've been really happy with it, and I think it's definitely an upgrade from the Bolt. However, it's it's not a, a massive upgrade. It's it's a little step up. The w ride quality is a little bit better, a, l a little bit nicer. Uh, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit less wind noise. So it's it's better, but it's not like moving from you know a, a Civic to a Bentley or something. Right, and that makes sense because you went from you know the Premier, the nice nice spec Bolt, to basically the base spec Tesla. And granted, the Model Three is a lot more car than the Bolt ever was, but still, it's the base spec Tesla. So this interior is still quite minimal, uh, but it sounds like you're enjoying everything. Yeah, I, I've been really happy with it. That's awesome. So can we get driving and uh, see how you feel about the ride and quality and handling and all that? Absolutely. Let's get started. So. Your Bolt had like the start and stop, but this is a Tesla, right? So you're just shifting into gear. That's the normal thing, I guess. Yep, that's all I had to do. I don't have to press a, like a start-stop button or, or do much. It's just put my foot on the brake and shift it into gear. Nice, and um, I can say, you know, being in here feels quiet for me, but how are you finding NVH, like noise, vibrations, harshness with all the ride? Yeah, it's, it's good. It's not fantastic. It is a little bit harsh. And uh, there are a lot of cars, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, ICE cars that, like regular ones, just feel a bit more comfortable, a little bit smoother, a bit better over bumps. What would be a reference of like an ICE car that you think is more comfortable than this? Uh, Toyota Corolla Yeah, uh, is, is not too bad. Um, one thing I, I have noticed is uh, if you guys are familiar with some of the roads that are concrete and they've got those uh, little undulations, it doesn't deal with that super well. So I, I feel that pretty pretty harshly. Mm -hmm. It's not the worst, not the end of the world, but it's something that I do notice. Yep, and this is not the performance. I bet that the performance would be even stiffer, though maybe in some ways more advanced with the suspension design. I don't know too much about the geekiness of that, but um, I'm sure that would be different still. Yeah. So in terms of power and everything coming from the Bolt, this is a rear-wheel drive car. Your Bolt was front-wheel drive. Um, this is you know, not an inc incredible jump in horsepower, but I'm sure it's still appreciable. How are you finding that? It's interesting, actually. It is a little bit faster, and I do notice it. However, with this vehicle, the uh, the throttle is a little bit weird. If you floor it, it won't immediately give you 100% power the way the Bolt does. It kind of ramps it up a little bit slowly, mm -hmm. which makes it feel a little bit slower in some ways. 
However, once you're actually uh, getting that full acceleration, it is a bit quicker. The thing I always notice in the Bolt, and I've heard from talking to others that's applied to their Spark EV and other things, is like, I guess early GM with EVs did not seem to really have a, much of a concept of like traction control or anything. They were just like, you know what, just give you everything. Uh, whereas like, you know, Tesla's been making EVs for a while. This is, uh, I always find when I'm in Tesla is the pedal feel is like about as dialed in as it can get. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's, it's really, really nice and it's, it's easy to drive smoothly. That's awesome. So overall, sounds like you're not regretting your decision at all. And of course, you've got all these sweet incentives coming your way. Coming down the road, you know, and let's say a few thousand miles, a few months when it's winter again, like what kind of other big accessories or changes do you think you might make? Yeah, great question. I'm uh, definitely going to need some uh, winter tires, uh, most likely some Nokians. Love uh, Nokians here at spec. Yeah, but uh, these current tires are very efficient, good in the summer, but they're not great for winter or snow, which we get here in Boulder. So this car came spec, are these Michelin all season tires? Uh, I think they're technically all seasons, but they're not very good. They're not the like snow. snow peak rated or whatever. No, yeah. correct. Cool. Well, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the car so far. It's really nice in here inside and uh, Zoe seems to be loving it as well. Yeah, it's been really great. Well, we'll see everyone next time and I can't wait to hear more about your Tesla Odyssey. Looking forward to talking to you guys about it.